back to Braintree today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. A strain of COVID-19 that combines the Delta and Omicron variants, known as Deltacron, was recently discovered in Cyprus, Greece. According to Professor of Biological Sciences at the University of Cyprus and Head of the Laboratory of Biotechnology and Molecular Virology, Leon Dios Kostrykis said, quote, There are currently Omicron and Delta co-infections, and we found this strain that is a combination of these two, end quote. The discovery was named Deltacron due to the identification of Omicron-like genetic signatures within the Delta genomes. According to the report, 25 cases of the virus have been found so far, and this follows recent findings in the U.S. where reports of Fluorona, a combination of the flu and COVID-19, have been on the rise. On Monday, Governor Charlie Baker released a new option for Massachusetts residents to get digital proof of one's COVID-19 vaccine. This provides individuals and businesses with a scannable code that links directly to the user's documented vaccine history. There is also a second option coming out later this week for those in the city of Boston. This option would give users a more simple way of showing a photo of their COVID-19 vaccine card on their phone. Both these new tools come as several cities and towns in Massachusetts, including Boston, are now requiring proof of vaccination for certain indoor venues, such as restaurants, fitness centers, museums, and other entertainment settings. On Monday, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education announced that masks will remain required indoors in Massachusetts public schools through at least the end of February. School staff, students, and parents have been awaiting the decision from Education Commissioner Jeff Riley on whether he would extend the mandate that was set to expire on Saturday, January 15th. Omicron fueled a massive spike in COVID-19 cases in the state, and the return to classrooms after winter break was marked by an abundance of virus-related absences that in some cases caused staffing shortages. Districts reported a total of more than 51,000 new student and staff COVID-19 cases between December 23rd and January 5th. On January 15th, the town of Braintree is offering a free walk-in COVID-19 booster clinic for residents 18 years and older. The boosters will be available on a first-come, first-served basis while supplies last. And in order to obtain a booster, residents must bring their COVID-19 vaccination cards and health insurance cards. The clinic will run from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Department of Elder Affairs at 71 Cleveland Avenue in Braintree. The state is still monitoring and reporting health trends as cases continue to grow. Over the weekend, over 298,000 molecular tests were conducted and 60,986 new positive cases were reported. Currently, 2,923 people are hospitalized in Massachusetts and 432 are in the ICU. 53 new deaths were also reported. The town of Braintree will also continue to monitor COVID data from the state. In the last week, Braintree Town Hall reported 842 new COVID-19 cases. The Town Hall website currently shows 7,908 positive cases in total. There have been no new fatalities reported in eight months, keeping Braintree's total deaths at 136. Thanks for watching Braintree today. We'll be right back with more after the break. The COVID-19 vaccine is an important tool to protect yourself and your loved ones against COVID. Getting the vaccine can help us get back to doing the things we love most. Trust the facts. Get the vax. Welcome back. Braintree's Conservation Commission held a hearing last Thursday to discuss the proposed Tri-Town Regional Water Treatment Plant. The new plant would be built next to the current Braintree treatment plant, while pipes beneath Great Pond would carry the treated water to the current Randolph Holbrook facility located on the other side of the pond. Currently, the estimated cost to design and build the plant is $73 million, with an extra $3.5 million to be split by Holbrook and Randolph for the pipeline. The town of Braintree will pay half of the construction cost, while Randolph will pay 34% and Holbrook will pay 16%. Before deciding on the project, the commission plans to visit the site and review engineering reports. 
Construction on the regional plant is expected to start later this year and be operational by 2024. The Commission will hold another meeting on February 3rd to further discuss the treatment plan. A public meeting on the upcoming construction of the new South Middle School was held in the auditorium of the East Middle School on Monday night. The school building committee introduced the project's construction team, provided an overview of the project and the construction schedule, and reviewed the logistics plan for the work site. On the other hand, the school committee who also met on Monday did not reach all the topics on their planned agenda, but confirmed seats of their new members. The committee voted Lisa fisk Heger back as the chairwoman along with Kelly Cobb-Lemire elected as the committee vice chairwoman. Carla Saris was also voted as recording secretary. The next meeting has been scheduled for January 24th. 22-year-old Jose Rodriguez admitted to firing a gun inside Braintree's South Shore Plaza and shooting an innocent bystander in the chest and hand. On Monday, Rodriguez pleaded guilty to armed assault to murder, possession of a large capacity firearm, and numerous other assault and firearm charges. The shooting happened back in July of 2020 when a fight broke out between two groups. District Attorney, Attorney Michael Morrissey said, quote, This defendant punched a woman in line at a store, causing an altercation between parties. He stepped away, retrieved the loaded firearm he was carrying, and fired six times in the thick of the mall. End quote. The innocent bystander was a 15-year-old girl. Rodriguez then ran away, threw his gun, and was eventually tracked by the late police canine kit and placed under arrest. Rodriguez was sentenced to eight years in prison, followed by three years of probation with several conditions including having to wear a GPS ankle monitor and a curfew for his first year, excuse me, year of probation, among other conditions. Every January, in celebration of Martin Luther King Jr. Day, Braintree honors a resident for their service to the town. On Thursday, January 13th, Braintree America Chorus will honor former town councilor Henry Hank Joyce with the Town of Braintree Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Peacemaker Award. Joyce was one of the original members of the town council representing District 4 from 2008 to 2014. He is a past member of the town's Parks Commission and is the chairman of the town's Elder Affairs Advisory Board. Joyce has also been an active member of the Knights of Columbus and the Braintree Rotary Club and has been a director of the Braintree Babe Ruth Youth Baseball League and served several terms as its president. The ceremony in honor of Mr. Joyce will be held at 6.30 p.m. on January 13th at Braintree Town Hall in the Cahill Auditorium. BCAM TV will be televising and streaming this event live on our government channel, Comcast Channel 8 and Verizon Channel 26, and on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash BCAMTV. Thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area. Welcome back to Braintree Today. Bob Saget, the well-known actor and comedian best known for his role as beloved single dad Danny Tanner on the sitcom Full House, has passed away at the age of 65. According to a sheriff's statement on Twitter, deputies in Orange County, Florida were called Sunday about an unresponsive man in a hotel room at the Ritz-Carlton in Orlando, where they found Saget dead. Saget was in Florida as part of his I Don't Do Negative Comedy tour. Fellow comedians and friends praised Saget not only for his wit, but his kindness. In a statement released Sunday, Saget's family members said they are, quote, devastated to confirm that our beloved Bob passed away today. Though we ask for privacy at this time, we invite you to join us in remembering the love and laughter that Bob brought to the world, end quote. The American Red Cross blood donation supply is critically low. Blood donations typically wane during the holiday season, but the shortage is being compounded by the ongoing challenges of the coronavirus pandemic. In an effort to get more donations, the organization is asking people to strongly consider donating in the new year. 
the organization is offering blood and plasma donors the chance to win tickets to the Super Bowl and a home theater package. People who give blood or plasma during the month of January will automatically be entered to win two tickets to Super Bowl 56 in Los Angeles, California. The package includes round-trip airfare, entry to the official NFL tailgate event, and three-night hotel accommodations, plus a $500 gift card for other expenses. Additionally, January donors will be entered for the chance to win a home theater package. There are a few Red Cross blood drives coming up in the area, including on January 25th from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. at the Blue Cross Blue Shield in Quincy, and on January 31st from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Quincy Sons of Italy. For more information, you can visit redcrossblood.org. Hanover's very own Crumble Cookie is finally having its grand opening. Crumble Cookie has gained popularity on the internet since the first Crumble Cookie opened in Utah in 2017. They are widely known for their weekly changing cookies that are made from scratch, with six cookie flavors available per day. There is always a classic chocolate chip and some variation of a sugar cookie, along with four rotating flavors. On Sundays, the shops close to announce the new flavors of the week on social media and its website. Last summer, Pam and Matthew Arias said they would open a crumble cookie franchise at Hanover's Merchants Row Shopping Center, and now their plans are finally coming to fruition. After the Hanover location is up and running, the Ariases also plan to open locations in the Braintree and Weymouth area and in Dedham. The Hanover's crumble cookie will have its grand opening on Friday, January 14th. Towns across the South Shore offer outdoor and indoor skating areas, some of which offer free or affordable public skating times throughout the week. For those looking to head to the rink, first up is the Rockland Ice Rink. They offer free public skating from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and free hockey time from noon to 2 p.m. on Mondays and Fridays. Then, the Shea Memorial Skating Rink in Quincy and the Canal Ice Rink in Weymouth offer $5 public skating hours. And lastly, the Pilgrim Skating Arena in Hingham offer $5 little people skate time for pre-K and kindergarten skaters. So if you're getting out there to skate, make sure you check out each rink's website for more information. Thank you for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. When the COVID pandemic began, scientists had been studying similar viruses for years, so they had a head start creating this vaccine. They also started making the vaccine early, hoping it would be approved after clinical trials, found it was safe and effective. Learn more. Welcome back to Braintree Today. First up in entertainment, Betty White, an actor, comedian, and activist who was widely regarded both on and off screen as an American treasure and whose popularity transcended generations, died on New Year's Eve at the age of 99, just weeks away from her 100th birthday. In original plans for her birthday celebration, national screenings celebrating the life of Betty White will play in 900 theaters, including two in and near Braintree, on January 17th. Originally titled Betty White 100 Years Young, A Birthday Celebration, the film has now been renamed to Betty White, A Celebration. The documentary examining White's eight-decade career includes what is now White's final on-screen interview, as well as tributes from many actors and friends. Tickets are now on sale for screenings, scheduled for 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. at AMC Braintree and the Randolph Showcase Cinemas. Now, for more movies to check out this week, we're diving into some of the current most popular movies. First up is Disney's Encanto, has re been receiving a whole lot of attention ever since it's made its way onto Disney+. Encanto tells the story of a young Colombian girl who faces the frustration of being the only member of her family without magical powers. However, she may be the family's last hope when she discovers that the magic surrounding the Encanto is now in danger. You can watch Encanto on Disney+. Plus. Next in entertainment, Don't Look Up features two low-level astronomers who must go on a giant media tour to warn mankind of an approaching comet that will destroy planet Earth. Don't Look Up stars Timothy Chalamet, Leonardo DiCaprio, Melania Linsky, and many more. You can watch Don't Look Up on Netflix. 
And finally, The Matrix's Resurrection is the first Matrix movie since the 2003 The Matrix Revolutions. In order to find out if his reality is a physical or mental construct, Neo will have to choose to follow the White Rabbit once more. Neo already knows what he has to do, but what he doesn't know yet is that The Matrix is stronger and far more dangerous than ever. You can watch The Matrix Resurrection in theaters or on HBO Max. That'll wrap up entertainment for today. Thank you for watching Braintree Today. I'm Martha Constantinides, and that's all we have for news today. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.